Hi guys, this is Alan. If you listen and like these podcasts, please consider making a small donation to keep the podcasts alive. Unfortunately at the moment, I have no other means of generating an income, and I really do enjoy making these recordings for you. If you are like me, struggling to make ends meet, and you can't afford to make a small donation, then please simply press like and subscribe and recommend it to a friend. That would be a tremendous help. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. I will put the link below in the description for this podcast. Thank you. This Camino series was much, much longer than I expected. This is the very last episode, I promise you, now that it's all been recorded for prosperity. And I was wondering, as you listen to these episodes, do you ask yourself what you would have done in the same situations? If you'd have acted differently, please tell me in the comments below. It would really be interesting. This episode will bring to the end a series of five parts about my lockdown. First, I will explain what to look for in my podcast cover photos. The pictures that front my weekly podcasts, parts one to four, and how they relate to the story for the people that may never have passed or even know anything about the Casa de las Dioses. Part 1. The cover photo shows the lean-to in the front garden. In the left-hand corner you will see where Carlos sleeps, and you'll just be able to make out his bike against the back wall, with my orange tent in the middle and Paco's green de Catalan tent in the right-hand corner. Part 2. This photo shows the same picture, but the emphasis is on the front garden, where the Awaska night took place around the fire, and where David spent hours hand weeding the flower beds. Part 3. This is inside the shack. You'll see the food on the table that we all shared. And then there's David and Carlos sitting on the right, with Tao and Manuel on the left, and Paco hiding behind the pillar. Part 4. Well, if you look very, very carefully at this photo, you'll see David lying on the roof, naked. And Part 5. Well, I'm not sure which photo I'm going to use yet. And in this final episode, I will talk about the main protagonists, the main characters that pass through La Casa, and any other information that I know about them, or maybe even their final destinations. During these pre-summer months of May and June, the countryside is always full of life and vitality, and it was no different around La Casa in northern Spain. Everything was growing fast and furiously. As eggs hatched, the parent birds worked hard to keep their chicks fed, and thousands of tadpoles in the reservoirs turned into tiny froglets. With the green barley and rye in the fields, which had grown shoulder high, and swayed in the warm breeze. The days were long and hot then. The evenings were enhanced by radiant sunsets and the occasional enormous cream-coloured moon, which reminded me of my childhood days at harvest time. And the nights were warm, with clear skies bursting with billions of bright stars. And since Carlos is gone, the nights seem a lot more peaceful now. Then two days after that night, where Carlos got a little crazy, Tao walked back into camp, like a scolded dog with his head down and tail between his legs. He'd walked the fifty kilometres from Lyon, and we all left Tao and David together to talk. And a deep sadness engulfed everyone in camp for about a week after that crazy night. It was a real solemn time. David spent most of his days preparing for his Camino walk to Finisterre, which will start soon and well before lockdown ends. And he plans to walk without shoes or money. Gala will leave too in a few days' time, but her destination 
and reasons for walking the Camino are different from David's. The new caretaker, Tamino, worked hard and tirelessly into the evenings in the back garden, watering and caring for his plants. And then one afternoon, unexpectedly, a massive swarm of bees turned up and decided to relocate inside the goat shed. Tamino said that he always fancied bees for the honey, but David panicked and called his friend in St. Pusto de Viga, who was the local bee expert, who came and took them away. Something had changed in Tao since his drunken arrest and recent return. His life wasn't the same as before, and now he seemed distant, with a sort of sadness hanging over him, almost as though he was disappointed in himself for how he acted that night. And after that night of mayhem, I just assumed Carlos headed back to a Rabanel and his friend the priest. I did wonder if Carlos suffered any hangover the next day. And much, much later, when I eventually got back on the Camino and strolled into Rabanel on my way through, I spoke to the bar owner there, and she said Carlos had sat in her bar for about five hours one day with just one coffee. And some time later, David stopped there too on his way through, asking for free food. Paco, Paco was never seen or heard of again. Here are a couple of small things that happened while he was at La Casa that I didn't mention before. He told David he never wanted to do any work while he was there, but he did succumb to peeling potatoes a couple of times for Tao to make everyone chips. And being a gypsy, he showed Tao how to play fake flamenco on an old guitar we had there. He also told us about the times he and some of his family members would play an organ around city streets, such as Alicante, Barcelona, Granada, etc., for money. But it was all a con. As he had the music pre-recorded on his phone, which was strapped under the instrument, and by activating the phone, all he had to do was pretend to play. And while we're talking about con artists, it reminds me of Francis from the earlier episodes. And after he was told to leave by David, he just disappeared. I saw him very early one morning. I'd been mooching around the woodland down in the valley, seeing what wildlife was out and about, and while walking back to camp on a lesser-used trail, he came flying past me on a pushbike and said hi as though he was my friend. David told me later that he'd been staying in an old abandoned house some kilometres away and got money by playing pre-recorded music down at the petrol station for the customers. The fire had been lit earlier in the evening in the centre of the front garden, where David, Gala, Manuel and Tamino later passed a jar of a wasco around and drank it. A couple of them had blankets around their shoulders as the gentle meditation music wafted on the chill night breeze. And the thing about a wasco is there are several ways of preparing it. The two main ways is first just the juice from the vine, and second, when it's mixed with hallucinogenic jungle plants that make a real potent mixture. And as you can imagine, each method produces very different sensations. From what I saw, they must have just taken jungle vine juice because the evening seemed to go very smoothly and they were all chilled out by the end of the night. How would you feel if someone told you they could make your dream come true. Pretty excited, I'd imagine. So the realisation that David couldn't fulfil the promise to Tao made Tao incredibly sad. And I felt that he'd pinned all his hopes onto David's promise. He really believed in David. And a week later, after finding out there'd be no goats, no dream, Tao packed his new backpack and set off to walk to Salamanca to move on with his life. 
David reveled in the joy that he'd soon be back on the Camino, because for him it was freedom. And one afternoon he set off barefoot and penniless. A few days later, Gala tore herself away from La Casa, with tears running down her face as she walked off. She kept turning round and waving goodbye as she walked towards St. Justo de Viga. And that only left Tamino and myself. My plan was to reach Santiago de Compostela on July the 1st, 2020. Why the first I hear you ask? Well, that was the day that everything was going to reopen in Spain. All the provincial borders, our burgers, pensiones, bars, restaurants, etc. would all be opening up again. The plan was to leave a few days after gala. Because one, if I leave before, I'll arrive too early. And two, I hope there will be a better chance of finding the odd alberga open, maybe a pension. And three, Jordi, David and Gala will have paved the way a little for me. And four, I really needed some time without people, just to be on my own. In the days prior to leaving, I reflected on my time there. I walked around, taking in the memories created by the different people who came and went, what they did and what they said, and being conscious of my time spent and my lessons learnt. I've always been fascinated about what people do and why they do those things, and how they react and interact with each other. And there was a lot of inflexibility in that shack. People said they were open-minded, but wouldn't listen to anybody else's opinions. Some people were even unable to see that their conspiracy theories or ideas might be viewed as ridiculous and learn to accept it. And everybody at La Casa was looking for something they didn't have. And this just might be a human trait. For example, Carlos was looking for respect and he was looking for work. He liked to work and feel useful. Tamino is looking for the knowledge of growing things and being good in the garden. And Paco was always looking for money without working. I should have suggested he could have been a porn star. Gala, well, she was just looking for a new life and the freedom to roam. Tao, well, Tao was looking to fulfil his dreams with goats and a more settled life. And David, he's looking to be loved and praised to boost his ego, which he got before by giving away free food to passing pilgrims. And Francis, he was always looking to manipulate people to make money for him so he didn't have to work. Manuel, he's hoping that his documentary will be successful and that his health will be okay. And Geordie, he was just looking for excitement. And for myself, I just want to know that my broken leg, my broken bone, has finally fused together. But it always comes back to the same thing doing the right things for the right reasons. I plan to leave around 7am, simply because I just love walking through the countryside early in the mornings. And that's before Tamino got up, so I left him a message, wishing him all the best and goodbye, written on a piece of paper left on the table in the shack. In hindsight, it's easy to reflect on mistakes and decisions made. But all in all, it was some experience. And it's so true when they say every place has its time. And three months there was a long time. Then when I walked out of La Casa de las Dioses for the last time, and back into my stride on the Camino. Well, that's all for this week, folks. And please remember... The same road can be travelled a thousand different ways, so get out there and make it your own. Until next week.